Aspen University, CJ415, Supervision of Police. My name is Andre Rosedale. I'm the instructor for this course. And this is Module 8, Discussion Question Number 1, which reads, Compare and contrast information versus intelligence and describe the methods used for identifying potential terrorist targets. Look forward to your response with a good uh, APA reference on comparing and contrasting information versus intelligence, and then uh, describe the methods that are used for identifying potential terrorist targets. So in order to continue this conversation and to bring it more to a hands-on type of thing, um, what do you think as a supervisor, my question posed to you for this to continue the discussion question is what do you think as a supervisor is your responsibility to make sure that information flows up the line and down the line and the same thing with intelligence um, police uh, police departments police agencies in this country were designed to be decentralized so that we didn't have like one strong police department to control the people that was the design of basically the, the founding fathers um, and then spread out through the evolution of policing. But some departments don't have a whole lot of communications while others have great ones. Um, as a municipal officer in Southeast Connecticut, we had some kind of networking with other departments, but for the most part, we were the only true independent police department in our area we were surrounded by what they call resident troopers which is where a trooper or a group of troopers patrol just the town and they're paid by the town to do that but they only do that monday through friday uh, 7 to 11 p.m 7 a.m to 11 p.m and then the troop the the state police uh precinct or troopers are called in connecticut pick up that area for the weekends and the nights or they're covered by uh, con constables, which are constabularies, which are run by cons constables, which are municipal police officers, but are controlled by the state police. They're dispatched, they're jails, and their administrators are state police, usually a resident trooper. Um, so our communication with them wasn't all that great. Uh, there is a regional, there's a statewide uh, organization called CTIC which uh, was like a central intelligence type of thing and it did have officers from different departments um, and we had the hotline where like let's say we had a robbery and we saw the suspect vehicle heading south on 395 we would call up over the hotline we would say you know rose city to surrounding towns bank robbery suspect scene southbound on 395 and that's kind of how our information would go out um, and also within the department, one of the big problems my department had was we didn't know what the detectives were doing. Midnight shift didn't know what day shift was doing. We had a thing called roll call where we would have lineup notes and uh, we'd write down like, I'm looking for an evading vehicle that matches this description. And people were supposed to write that down in their field notebook and if they saw it, they would stop it and get the information. But there wasn't a whole lot of good flow of information up and down the... the um, my department, um, when I had an opportunity to work outside the department with a state project I was working on, there's a, a city in the middle of uh, Connecticut that everybody knew what everybody else was doing. They knew when meetings were happening. They knew crime trends, suspects, things that were happening on evening shift that would bleed over to day shift, that kind of thing. So my question to you again is, as a supervisor, how important do you think it is, as like a first-line supervisor, as a sergeant, do you think it is to make sure that information and intelligent flows in both directions? And if it's important, what can you do to continue it moving if there's a slowdown? I look forward to your answer.